Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Tonight we're going to be talking about a very requested aspect of being an admin of your server, which is base decay. So stay tuned. We're going to get right into it. Welcome to Rust Admin Academy, where I teach you all the tips and tricks to owning and operating your own successful Rust server. Like I said in the intro, today we're going to be talking about base decay. And there's a simplified version, there's a complicated version, and then there's the plugin version. So we're going to work through each three of the different categories of control, and you guys can decide which one that you want to use. So the first thing that we need to do is to confirm that we actually have decay on our server. Yes, I know you're probably already going to know that, but I'm just going to show you the command anyways, and I'll also explain why I'm showing you the command. So let's go to our test server console, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So the command that I'm talking about is decay.upkeep. So if we just type that into our console and then hit enter, it's going to tell us what the status of our decay upkeep is. So on my test server right now, it is set to false, which means there's no decay on my server. By default, of course, this is true, which makes it so that your bases decay at a natural rate. So because mine is false right now, let's say I want to change it back to true. It's as simple as going decay.upkeep true. Just like that. Now the decay is turned back on on our test server and things are going to decay like normal. So just in the case of our test server, I've turned decay back to false. So if that's all you came here to learn was how to turn decay off on your server, then you can leave this video. You don't have to finish watching it because the next two sections that I'm going to cover are certainly more difficult than decay.upkeep on or off or true or false. Okay, so the next section of decay upkeep is a little bit more complicated than just a single command, whether it's on or off. We can actually individually control which materials decay at which scale. I know this is gonna get complicated, so try and bear with me here and I'll, I'll, I'll get through everything. Um, and of course, if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to leave questions in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. This first section here that I have highlighted is at what rate buildings will decay depending on what scale or what level they're built at. So uh, a twig hut not protected by a TC is going to decay inside of an hour. A wooden hut is going to decay inside of three hours, stone, and so on and so on and so on. You can see where I'm going with this. But this is the rate at which things are going to decay when they're not covered by a TC and never have been. All right, so this next section here, this is where it starts getting a little bit complicated. So I've broken this apart into four different sections um, and we'll just work on one section at a time. So the size of your base is broken up into brackets, we'll say, okay? So um, the first bracket that they have by default is called bracket zero and it's 15 blocks. And now a block is, um, any part of a base whether it be a foundation that could be square or triangle could be a half wall equals one block a doorway equals one block um, you see what i'm getting at basically every component of your base counts as one block so in bracket zero anything from one block up to 15 blocks the default decay rate or upkeep rate is 0.1 or 10 percent of your resources so let me put this into real life terms for you if you have let's say you have a one by one base so that is a six block base plus you'd have a door or some kind of some kind on there as well but it's a six block base let's say the the upkeep resources required for that is like 30 let's say and that could be anything. It could be 30 wood. It could be 30 stone. It depends on what you've got your base built out of. Let's say it's 30. So for every upkeep period, and we're going to get into that in a second because you can control that upkeep period as well. Uh, for every upkeep period, it's going to require 10% of that upkeep of 30 in order to keep your base sustained. So by default, that upkeep period is 24 hours, but we can change what that upkeep period. Okay, so what that translates to is what we're saying in this imaginary base that we're talking about right now is that for 24 hour period, it's going to require 30 of whatever resource our, our base is built out of. Let's say it's wood or stone or whatever. It's going to take 30 stone to maintain our stone one by one base for 24 hours. But if we wanted to change the 
the upkeep period to a longer period, let's say. Uh, let's say that we wanted to make it 36 hours instead of 24 hours, so a day and a half instead of just one day. We would use this command down here. So this is decay upkeep period in minutes. So let's just take that and over to our console. And we want to change this number to 2160. So this is going to make it so that our upkeep period is 36 hours instead of the default 24. So our 30 stones that's required for this base is now going to last 36 hours instead of 24. And of course, the bigger you build your base, the higher the bracket you're going to end up in, which means the more percentage of resources you have to provide your TC in order to keep it maintained. So the second default bracket is 50 blocks. So a, a base that is uh, between 15 and 50 blocks is going to cost you 15% of your base materials in upkeep for every upkeep period and so on and so forth. So the next, the next bracket is uh, 51 to 125 blocks and the next one above that is 126 to 200 blocks. Every bracket that you increase to or make your base that much bigger, it increases the, we'll call it taxation to maintain that base. So the biggest bracket that you can be in is 200 blocks or higher and that's gonna cost you 33.3% of your resources every tick rate in order to maintain that base. So a 200 block base is the highest taxable size of base that you can have. This was really done by design. This was their in intention the whole time. Uh, they basically wanted to make it harder for people to have these massive, massive bases because they would have to maintain their resources so much. So the reason why I'm going through this is because you can control this stuff as the admin of your server. You can actually change the brackets in which that these tax rates change as well. You can change how much tax is required to keep their bases alive. So in a real world application, when you would use this is let's say you have a low pop server, like let's say you have um, you know, five to 10 people that play on a consistent basis, but they can't come on every day. You're noticing that they only log on like once every two or three days or something like that. Well, you can actually change their bracket size so that their base fits into a smaller bracket, or you can go through and change their tax rate so that it costs them less resources to maintain their base for the same amount of time. So let's just say we had a player on our server uh, that had a, a base that was within the bracket zero, so it was less It was less than 16 blocks was his entire base. Uh, let's say that we wanted to reduce his upkeep tax to 1% instead of 10%. So the way to do that, was, so you can take this command right here, decay.bracket underscore zero. So we're talking about bracket zero and we're gonna change the cost fraction. So this is the entire command right here that you would take over to your console. So hop over to console and if you type in that command and you change the the tax percentage to 0 0.01 that'll change the tax rate for bracket zero to one percent instead of the default ten percent which means the, the resources required to maintain that base will be reduced by 10 times essentially i know this stuff is getting a, a little bit complicated and maybe i'm not exactly getting my point across to you guys very well um, this is pretty advanced stuff and this isn't really stuff that most people are going to even be interested in. Um, but I am putting the information out there just because people are asking for it. Do your best to follow along if this information is important to you. If it's not, I completely understand that you guys click out of this video right now and head on to the next one because it's only getting worse from here. So this next section is basically a delay that we can add into whatever level of material that was used to build the base that we want. So metal, stone, uh, high qual, which is called top tier in the game, twig and wood. We can put in a delay after their TC runs out of resources before it starts to decay. And this number is measured in hours. So for example, if we wanted to take a twig base, let's say a player built a twig base, he put a TC in it, but he only put like five pieces of wood in there. And we know for a fact that it's gonna decay and disappear before this guy logs back in. We can change the amount of time that the server is gonna wait before that base starts to decay. So let's just grab this command, decay.delay 
and we're working with the section twigs. Decay.delay underscore twig. So let's go over to our console. So this number is measured in hours. So how many hours do we want to delay before this twig base starts to decay? So let's just say for testing purposes, uh, we want it to wait 12 hours. So now the, de the decay delay for twig level is 12 hours. And you can do this for all five levels of building materials used to build a base. So let's say you have somebody that has metal on part of their base and high qual on another part of their base and let's say stone on another part of their base. Um, all of these numbers still apply to each individual resource type that was used to build the base. If you made the stone decay delay at eight hours and we've made twig at 12 hours, so actually any part of the base that's built out of stone would actually start to decay sooner than the twig part of the base. And in the next section, this is showing you how long by default it's going to take for a base to decay after it's ran out of the required resources to keep it alive. So by default, metal will decay after eight hours. Stone will decay after five hours. High qual will decay after 12 hours. Twig will start decaying after one hour and wood will start decaying after three hours. So you can increase these, decrease these, you can make them whatever you want. Um, I'm actually gonna take one of these, put it into the console so that you can actually see it happening. So top tier, decay duration. I'm not sure I worded that right. This is how long it's gonna actually take for these materials to decay. So if I said that wrong at the beginning, I'm gonna learn this after I go to edit this video, but uh, if I said this wrong, it's how long that section of base is gonna take to decay. So in this case, we're going to change the high qual section. By default, it's set at 12 hours. So let's say that we want to change that to 24 hours. So now decay duration top tier is set to 24 hours. So after the TC runs out of high qual, anything that's built out of high qual will decay inside of 24 hours instead of the default 12. The last section that we're going to cover in this list of commands is the decay tick. So the tick is the period of time before it goes back into the TC and grabs more resources. So from default, it's every 10 minutes. So every 10 minutes, the upkeep of your base is taking resources out of the TC. So this is measured in seconds. So 600 seconds equals 10 minutes. We can change this to whatever we want. We could change it to one minute if we wanted to. So if we just grab that command and head over to our console, if we type decay.tick, and change that number to 60 instead of 600. That means every 60 seconds, it's gonna take that tax rate out of our TC in resources. So now that we've gone through and made all these changes on our server, we've, we've made these uh, decay rate changes, we actually have to write it to the server config file. And to do that, you do write CFG, just like that. So, that's now saved into our server's config file and it's going to reload this information the next time our server restarts or, or any time we restart the server. It's gonna maintain those values that we've changed in there. If you don't write, write CFG and then you restarted your server, you would lose those changes that you've made and you'd have to go back and do it again. So make sure you type in write CFG to write these settings to your config file. I know this, this video got a little bit weird. Um, I, I totally understand that this is a complicated process. It used to be much, much easier. Um, but with this tax rate and stuff that they introduced a while back, it definitely makes the commands a lot more difficult to wrap your head around and then implement if you need to do that. Most people, however, are just looking to turn off decay rate altogether. They don't want to deal with this taxation or, or base size or anything like that. And you can just simply do decay upkeep false, and that's going to turn it off altogether. And if I didn't mention it at the beginning of the video, when I was talking about decay.upkeep, when you have that in the false position, the server is still going to appear like it's taking resources out of the TC. It's not actually going to. So basically what that means is your players don't have to put anything in their TC and it is going to have the, the silly warning that we hate having uh, building is decaying in the bottom right hand corner of their screen, but it's not actually decaying. And no, there is no way that we can change that. We can't make that go away. 
So what I've done in the past is just put one of each resource into my TC so that it makes that warning go away, but that those that that individual resource of whatever my base requires to stay kept up never goes away. All right, so if I still have your attention, I appreciate you getting this far through the video. And if this was helpful to you at all, be sure to throw me a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more content just like this, except maybe not so complicated, because I knew this was gonna be a complicated video. But if you wanna see more content about owning and operating your Rust servers, be sure to subscribe and turn on notification bells. There should be some videos popping up on the right hand side of my screen right now. It just links you to other videos in my channel. So be sure to check them out. You might find something that you didn't know before. And of course, if you haven't already, click on the circle to subscribe to the channel. All right, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.